What's going on guys, welcome back into another video and today, today, guys, let me just do that. We are in Oscar season, we are in peak Oscar season, I mean literally this Sunday is the Oscar, so the biggest award of the night obviously is Best Picture. We have nine nominees this year, so I thought, and I have officially now seen all nine Best Picture nominees. I just saw Parasite this past week. I have now seen all nine Best Picture nominees. So I thought, since this is the first time I've ever seen all of the Best Picture nominees, let's rank them. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. I'm going to give you my rating of the film. So I put those films into my brand new movie rating system, the system from one to 100. I, I did those all here. So I have their new rankings. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank them based off of the number rating. But then, but then, I'm going to do my personal ranking. The ones that are my favorites, the one, the ones that I like the most, because it's it's my video, my list. I wanted to do that. So we're going to have three things that we're talking about, and that'll be fine. But first up, before we get into any of that, if you are new, first off, thank you so much for taking the time to like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you are new, thank you so much for taking the time to click on the video. It means the absolute world. If you are a returner, thank you so much for keeping the momentum going. But yeah, guys, I think without further ado, let's just quit talking and let's get into it. All right, so the first one we've got, I'm going to just tell you guys how these rank, r are rated, my bad. Um, so we have The Irishman. After going through the movie rating system, it got a 90, a 90 out of 100. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood also got a 90 out of 100. We have Little Women, got a 93 out of 100. Jojo Rabbit also got a 93 out of 100. Parasite got a 95 out of 100. Joker got a 96 out of 100. Marriage Story got a 97 out of 100. 1917 got a 98 out of 100. And Ford v Ferrari got a 99. So I basically just gave you the ranking rating wise. We had The Irishman at nine, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at eight, Little Women at seven, Jojo Rabbit at six, Parasite at five, Joker at four, Mary Story at three, 1917 at two, and Ford v Ferrari at one. But coming in at number nine is still The Irishman. Now, I just want to say up front, I love every movie on this list. I have enjoyed watching every movie. I love all the experiences. Just because one is at nine or eight doesn't mean I don't like it. Just means I like the other ones better than it. Scorsese, it's a masterclass from Scorsese. It really is. It's a technical achievement. It's also just an achievement in directing. It's a very long movie. You've got those stars, Pacino, Pesci, De Niro, all back together in the same film. It's a great film, it really is. But the thing that really doesn't do it well for me is it's long. And I watched it in one sitting and you know, I took it all in in one sitting. But it, it dragged so much, it dragged. And I understand that's what he was going for and I get it, it was a mob epic. I understand that, I respect that. But for me personally, it being my favorite list, it just, it being so slow, it being so long, the pacing not being good, I felt like I was sitting on my couch for six hours. I really did. I love the performances. I think Scorsese directs it very well besides the pacing. And it is at the bottom of the barrel for me. It comes in at number nine on my list. And then number eight is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. This is a very entertaining one. Uh, Tarantino directs a very great film here. The cast in general is very, very good. Uh, but it, but it, it kind of goes, it's the Irishman effect again. It's a long movie. I sat in the movie theater and watched it. I personally enjoyed it more. I love the Bounty Law stuff. I love the relationship between Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio's characters. I think that's great. I was a little turned off by the Spawn Ranch stuff. I know it, it furthered the plot with the Mansons, all of that. So I understand, I understand why it has to be there, but I just kind of wanted to see the Hollywood stuff. I will, and that's part of Hollywood, yes. Don't claim me like, yes. But I wanted to see like the Bounty Law stuff. And I wanted to see more of Leo acting and doing all of that, like, and Cliff. And, and I, like, I, that was what I, what I liked. Those were the parts I liked. And, you know, there was, There was stuff that, you know, I just I just didn't really like it as much. Um, but 
doesn't mean it's not a good movie. I enjoyed it. Again, I think Tarantino directed a relatively good movie. I think the cast overall did really well. Again, guys, I don't hate these movies. This one got a 90 out of 100. I mean, that's pretty, like, it's hard to get into the 90s for me. Um, and it did, and it was very great. It is very deserving of a nomination for Best Picture, but for me personally, it comes at number eight on my list. But coming in at number seven is Joker. Now, this is not the Irishman or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood effect. I think this is one of the best paced films ever. And it's a slow film, but it needed to be that way to drive Arthur, Arthur Fleck's character forward. And I saw that and I understood that and I watched the madness happen and engulf him. Cinematography is beautiful. Score is beautiful. Joaquin Phoenix is going to win the Oscar for Best Actor. It's just going to happen. It's going to happen. Really, this comes down to I just liked the other films better. I really did. I love Joker. Um, it's a very disturbing film to watch. I can't watch it like a lot. Like I've only still seen it in theaters. I own it on 4K, but I have not had the stomach to watch it again. That doesn't mean it's not a good movie. It's just very disturbing to watch, and, and you have to be in the right mindset. And I, I'm not always in the right mindset, but it's still a fantastic movie. I think it's great. The directing was not fantastic, but Todd Phillips still did a good job. Um, and it comes at number seven on my list. Coming at number six is Parasites, the one I just saw this past week. This is probably the first movie I've ever watched that is completely subtitled in a different language. Like this is the first, I think this is the first time I've ever watched it. And it was very captivating for me. It was a very interesting experience. Watched it at home, I bought, bought it on Blu-ray. Um, I didn't really want to go sit in a theater and watch it because I you know, had stuff I had to get done. So I watched it at home um, and man, it's just a captivating story. It really is. I, I mean, Bong Joon-ho does a great job with the direction here. I think the direction is, is phenomenal. Um, and I just, I, I enjoyed it, I did. Um, it was very, like, it was very unexpected. A lot of things that happened were very unexpected. I wasn't expecting them, especially at the end. The ending is so unexpected that I was just like, what in the, just, what, hello, what? Um, but it had a lot of hearts in the end. The story in the end, it just had a lot of hearts. Um, there's a lot of very interesting dynamics in this film. There's a lot of hidden imagery, a lot of lessons in this film. And I dug it. I really did. I was a little skeptical going in. I was worried that it was going to be so hyped and I wasn't going to like it, but I ended up enjoying it. Like I said, it got a 95, so that's right in the A range. Um, I don't know what awards it's going to win. I think it's just going to win a lot of technical awards. Bong Joon-ho could win director, but I do still think Sam Mendes will. Um, and it's still got a shot at Best Picture. It does, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I will have my Oscar predictions video coming out on Friday where we'll talk about all of that. Coming in at number five is Little Women. Greta Gerwig directs her butt off here. Fantastic direction. Fantastic direction. The performances, especially Saoirse Ronan, Florence Pugh, but everyone across the board, but those are the two standouts and they're the ones that got nominated for the Oscars, but everyone across the board was fantastic. It was a deep movie, heartfelt movie, emotional movie, especially when a certain something happens in the middle of the movie. I'm gonna say stare scene. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. That hit hard, very emotional movie. It's just a very, it's such a great story. I've never personally been invested in the Little Women story. I've never read the book. I've never seen the other adaptations. This was my first time being exposed to the story of Little Women and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Saoirse Ronan was fantastic. Florence Pugh was great. It was just so awesome. Coming in at number four is Marriage Story. This one is a treat because we got to see Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson probably at their best. Um, I love them both in their big blockbuster films and Star Wars and Avengers, but this one was a performance from both of them like I've never seen before, especially Adam Driver. Adam Driver's had such a fantastic year. I really wish Joaquin had not done Joker this year because then I believe Driver would be the front runner for the Oscar for this film because he was so good. But unfortunately, and not unfortunately, I loved Joaquin's performance, but Driver's not gonna win. It's just not going to happen. But that doesn't mean this wasn't a fantastic film. The director from Noah Baumbach slash the screenplay from Noah Baumbach are both incredible. The emotion that is elicited in this film is, is unlike anything I saw this year. 
And again, it's the performances that really captivate me. Laura Dern will win Best Supporting Actress, which is great. She deserves it. Um, ScarJo and Driver are both nominated, and they both deserve it. Bombach, I believe, is nominated, and I, he deserves it. They all deserve it. Will they win? Probably not. But I still absolutely love this one. I have not watched it since I first watched it, but I am going to watch it again very soon. I think it's fantastic. If you've not watched it, it's on Netflix. I would highly recommend it. It's a very, very serious, very deep movie, but it hits you in the feels. And guys, that argument scene is just is just insane. It's incredible. It really, like, it's incredible. It's, it's one of the best displays of acting I've ever seen. Comes in number four on my list. Coming in at number three is Jojo Rabbit. Taika, it's Taika Magic Man. We are in the Taika Zons. Everyone's talking about we're in the, like, the, the Kiana Zons. Or all. We are in the Taika Zons right now. He is killing it in everything he does. Star Wars, Marvel, and then this. This is such an imaginative satire towards hate and stuff like and, and themes like that and it's done in such a captivating heartfelt way roman griffin davis uh, mackenzie thomason i think is her name they're both fantastic and they're both young actors and they're great in this film absolutely phenomenal um taika directs a great film and another thing is scarlett johansson she was double nominated this year. She got supporting actress for this film and she absolutely deserves it. And I'm hearing rumors that she could upset one of those uh, categories, which if, if Scarlett Johansson wins an Oscar for either Marriage Story or Jojo Rabbit, I will lose my mind. I will be so happy. Nothing would make me happier besides Adam Driver winning or Ford v. Ferrari winning Best Picture. But those aren't going to happen. This film is so heartfelt. It's, it's, it's just, it's such, it's a story about a kid that is still young and doesn't really know what he is following or what he is believing. He's just blinded by this, this mass following. And then he learns that, hey, maybe this isn't right. Seeing that through the eyes of a young kid was very interesting. I think it was the right move. It's the same thing as the Florida Project. I just saw the Florida Project. To see these brutal, terrible things happening through the eyes of a little kid is a very different experience than seeing it through the eyes of an adult. And I respect that in this movie. I think it was very interesting. Overall, I love the movie. I think the performances are outstanding. Taika does, again, a fantastic job. I think the screenplay is great. And guys, the shoe scene. The shoe scene. That's all I gotta say. Two left. Coming number two is 1917. This is one of the most amazing experiences I've had watching a film ever, ever. I know that the one shot has been used before. I personally have never seen Birdman, so I can't comment on that. This is the first time I've had a truly fully looking one take movie experience. And I was, from the beginning, locked in. This is not a war story, and I'll explain that. By that I mean it's not a truly big action war movie. This is a human story. This is a human story. The two main gentlemen are fantastic. The cinematography, Deacons is a master, master. This is a technical masterpiece. Like I will, I will go out and say that. I will go out on a limb and say that. This is a technical masterpiece, this film is. The entire time I was locked in, start to finish, captivated, I loved it. It hit the heart. It was one of the most amazing experiences I've had in the theater ever, ever. And I absolutely loved it. It's at number two on my list. But guys, that means you know what's number one on my list. And of course, my number two movie of last year, it is Ford v Ferrari. This film is incredible. It's so, so good. Bale and Damon are fantastic. The editing, the direction, the stunts, the racing is all fantastic. The emotions it elicits are fantastic. That's another thing I'll say about 1917. It elicited great emotions. This is incredible. You feel like you are in the, the driver's seat or the passenger seat. You feel like you're in the passenger seat with Christian Bale as he is driving this car during Le Mans. Like you feel it. You feel the intensity. You feel that. You feel it. You feel it. You feel it. it is drilled into you this feeling of anxiety and anxiousness and adrenaline like that is in that was the thing that really did for me that was 
The story has one of the best bad guys of the year. And it's a racing movie. And to say it has one of the best bad guys of the year. You'll have to see it to find out. But you will hate this bad guy. Hate him. I'm going to say that. The performances all around are incredible. Again, the editing is fantastic. The racing scenes are the best. Unlike anything I've ever seen. But in the end, it's a human story about a, fa a racer and his family. And it hit. And it hit emotional tones at the end that I wasn't expecting. And it worked. And I fell in love with it. There you go. But we're going to run it back one more time. We got it this time, guys. Nine is The Irishman. Eight is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Six is Parasite. Five is Little Women. Four is Marriage Story. Three is Jojo Rabbit. Two is 1917. And one is Ford v. Ferrari. Let me know down in the comments below what is your favorite Best Picture nominee. Not who you think is going to win, but what is your favorite? What's your favorite? We're talking, ob we're talking objective here. What is your favorite Best Picture nominee? I don't believe Ford v. Ferrari is going to win. But again, we'll talk about that in my video on Friday. But I just wanted, like, that's my favorite. So let me know down below in the comments what your favorite Best Picture nominee is. But guys, that's pretty much it. Again, if you are new, thank you so much for taking the time to click on the video, liking, commenting, subscribing. All of that means the absolute world. If you are a returner, thank you so much for keeping the momentum going. Give me the 400 subscribers. We are almost there. When it happens, I will be doing a giveaway. So make sure you subscribe if you are new. But guys, that is pretty much it. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next video.